evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of FPSB India, I extend a warm welcome to all of you to today's exclusive webinar on harnessing financial planning opportunities through GIFT IFSC. I'm Sanya Chavan, Manager of Certifications and Engagements at FPSB India, and I'm thrilled to have you all here. This webinar is particularly significant as it builds on the momentum of our recent collaboration with the International Financial Services Centers Authority, that is IFSCA. As financial planning professionals, we are constantly looking for opportunities to ex expand our horizons and offer better services to our clients. The GIFT IFSC represents one such transformative opportunity that can elevate the scope of your work as financial planners. And today, we are honored to have with us Dr. Dipesh Shah, the Executive Director at IFSCA, who has been instrumental in the development of GIFT City since its inception in 2008. With over 23 years of experience in international business, project development, corporate affairs, corporate law, and policy matters. His most prominent achievement includes setting up and operationalizing India's first smart city and international financial services center. In his last 15 years tenure at Gift City, the city has made substantial progress in getting recognition as India's model smart, smart city, starting India's first multi services SEZ and only approved international financial services center. So in this webinar, uh, Dr. Shah will bring valuable insights into how GIFT IFSC can reshape the financial planning landscape for professionals like you. This webinar, joining him will be Tina Rawat, Head of Strategic Alliances at FPSB India. Tina's insights will be crucial in understanding how the global financial hub can help you maximize your potential. So before we dive into the session, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping, housekeeping points here. So the webinar will conclude with the 15 minutes question and answer session. And during the session, you'll be prompted to drop your questions in the Q&A tab activated at the bottom of your screen. And we will address as many questions as the time is available for us. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over the floor to our esteemed panelists. So Tina, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia. Um, I hope I am uh, audible, loud and clear. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to today's session on harnessing financial planning opportunities at GIFT IFSC. I am Tina Rawal, Head of Strategic Alliances at, at FPSB India, and I'm elated to moderate this discussion as we explore the dynamic landscape of financial planning within India's first international financial services center. And I have the distinct honor of hosting Dr. Dipesh Shah, as Sanya has rightly mentioned, he's the executive director of GIFT IFSC, a visionary leader with decades of experience and who has been instrumental in setting up India's first smart city and international financial service center, which has become a cornerstone of India's financial landscape. Thank you so much, Dr. Shah, for taking our time and for joining us today. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, so I have a list of questions for you. And I am sure so, so does our audiences. But before we dive into those conversations, it would be a wonderful idea to hear from you about IFSC and IFSCA. Uh, and if you could also share some insights into the recent activities and initiatives being undertaken by International Financial Services Centers Authority, IFSCA, at GIFT IFSC. Thank you, uh, Tanya, for having me today here. I think this is probably my first such interaction with the FPSB uh, uh, community. And I'm glad that uh, we already have an MOU with an FPSB for the International Financial Services Center at Gift City. Very impressive work which all of you are doing and uh, glad that both the Financial Center and the FPSB board uh, through all your professionals are now connected with the initiative which all of you have taken here in for, for the Gift City. Uh, at the outset, let me uh, quickly uh, give a, a, a quick background um, as to what does the Gift City, the International Financial Services Center, and the International Financial Services Authority all encompass into, and what are the opportunities emerging from this? So as we might be using this three terminology, one is the Gift City, the I, IFFC, and the IFFCA, let me just explain what does all three of them stand for. The Gift City is, as you are aware, is a larger, you know, city development project, which is encompassing both domestic and international financial services center. So when you visualize Gift City, it's a India's new smart city, which is uh, being developed on the concept of uh, a walk to work. It has, uh, you know, ingredients of social, 
the residential, commercial, uh, various activities happening within the city. And on a master plan, and on the city is spread over 900 acres of land area. And as I said, it has two zones, which are now creating a lot of opportunities for financial professionals. Within the gift city, there is a gift SEZ, which is a special economic zone. Um, and the, so the zone is very special because it is only India's only financial services center zone. Uh, so you have 300 plus SEZs in India, but there is only one SEZ in India, which is notified as an international financial services center. And what does an IFFC stand? IFFC is, as I said, international financial services center is India's only offshore center within onshore India. And when we say IFFC is an offshore zone, it means from a foreign exchange laws of India or foreign exchange management act, FEMA as we popularly known as, this zone is outside India, which which means that when a cent, when in the center, when a company or a branch or an LLP gets set up, it is considered being outside of India, in their outside of Indian law. And then within the within for, for the functioning of the IFFC, you have an International Financial Services Center authority, authority IFFCA, which is a new financial regulator within IFFC. So we all are aware, and probably the participants on this call must be aware that you have an RBI, you have SEBI, you have IRDA and PFID in India, which are the domestic financial regulator. But when it comes to the gift city, the International Financial Services Center, you have only just one financial center regulatory authority, which is IFFCA. So all the powers of the RBI, SEBI, IRD, and PFRD all have been combined into one financial regulatory authority when it comes to the IFFC zone. So you are just dealing with one financial regulator and all the powers of this regulatory authority covers the several segments of financial services like banking, insurance, capital market, even the areas like fintech, um, uh, foreign universities, um, aircraft leasing, ship leasing, um, bullion exchange. So, so many areas have been broadly covered within the IFFC ecosystem that as a financial professional, uh, you can actually impart uh, services into so many fields which in the earlier days, you know, which I'm saying without an IFFC present in India, people had to set up those services in Dubai, Singapore, Mauritius, or other centers outside India. So in, 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 uh, uh, in summary, what I can say is that <clears throat> IFFC now stands for India's first international financial services center, which allows you to do international financial services business, which were earlier, as I said, were not been happening because the regulations and tax were not in line with what was required for these businesses to be set up. And now the government of India with the Gift City Initiative is able to enable all these activities in this financial center. You also ask me about what a financial center is doing and you know what business it is generating. So the financial center, as I said, is encompassing several financial services in one and is imparting new line of businesses for the financial community. So like for example, for FPSB, uh, you have a new set of financial services regulation, financial services uh, entities, which, can, which have been brought in the IFFC zone. And as an, F, an FPSB professional, you can actually impart, you can set up new businesses and you can undertake these new activities, which were earlier not happening from India domestic zone. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dipesh, for giving detailed insight of what um, Gift City, what is happening in Gift City, what is IFSC and how IFSCA is a unified regulator uh, when it comes to um, international financial services. Um, uh, whilst you briefly spoke about how uh, you, various organizations are setting up their offices and Gift City is developing, I have personally been there um, quite a few times and I have seen a beautiful transformation. I am sure all our audiences should have an opportunity and will soon have an opportunity to visit Gift and see uh, um, the tremendous work that has been done by you, your team, and the government of India. But for the time being, I would also 
request you if you could possibly um, share with our audiences as to how many firms have you know established their presence recently at um, Gift IFSE and what are the career opportunities do you see emerging in this kind of environment, especially for the aspiring financial professionals? Yeah, very very important question. Uh, um, in, in in terms of the audience present today. So the IFFC, as I said, has more than 700 firms authorized. In fact, uh, in last three and a half years, or almost four years now, uh, we were, when we started as a unified regulator, we were 129 firms. And today we have 700 plus firms. So you can imagine just in last four years, uh, more than uh, 600 firms or more than 550 firms have entered the financial center. Now, as I said, they encompass several activities. So you have banks, around 28 banks now, uh, with many foreign banks present here. It includes even banks from, you know, US, UK, Singapore, Australia, um, and, and Germany, in several places, they all are operating within here. And what they do is they impart um, offshore services, which means somebody, Indian corporates who wants dollar, uh, or external commercial borrowing, the banks in gift are now becoming the lenders of dollars into India and are able to lend into foreign. So when you come in an IFFC, one, you can do business in India in dollars, you can do business within the IFFC zone, and you can do business with the global uh, markets from the IFFC. So you open up three opportunities in a new line of business. Second, we have a large number of wealth managers. And I think for FPSB members present here, you must examine and study the opportunities emerging from the asset management within the IFFC. What we've done now is we have brought in a foreign um, uh, fund management entity regulation, which is called FME regulation, which allows the fund managers to be set up here. And we, in fact, we just came out in the regulations in 2021 um, uh, uh, and just 2021 end, and we have just in last two and a half years, we have 150 funds now registered with us as an alternate asset investment funds, AIFs. And they invest into India, they invest um, outside, and uh, they are able to pull money from the global investors and invest into India opportunities. So, huge scope for the FPSB uh, professionals. To look at the fund management entities present in the IFFC zone, whether you want to set up your own fund or you want to be employed by the funds which are, uh, you know, set up here. Because in our regulations, we have made it compulsory to have a principal officer and a compliance officer. And uh, I think who better than an FPSB professional to impart the services within the IFFC because you are only well aware of the wealth management and the related activities. And this is hardcore, uh, you know, a uh, line of business or line of activity which you are so familiar with. So you, I, we can clearly see a huge opportunity which means 150 funds would have at least created 300 jobs here because everyone needs a principal officer and a, a compliance officer present. And as I speak, every month I am registering at least 15 to 20 new funds in the zone. So by the year end, you will have 200 or 250 more funds coming in the IFFC zone, and they will generate another 500 jobs in this field. So they, my my you know strong suggestions to all of you are present on this call that please go deeper, do a deeper dive into what is happening in the fund management in an IFFC. You can go on to a website which is ifffca.gov.in. This website, you will find the list of the entities present in the directory. If you go, you will find the name of the entities, even if you find the name of the person, and you can understand the activities that they're doing. So one is the bank, other, as I said, funds. Uh, we also have portfolio management services, PMS, and investment advisors. And again, this is a line of activity which is very close to what you guys are doing. Uh, so this is something you should examine. As a PMS, there are quite a few firms Investment advisors are there, broking firms are there. In fact, there are two international stock exchanges operating here, and they are dealing into dollar products uh, for for uh, um, uh, you know investors. Like uh, many of you may be aware of the product called Gift Nifty, which was earlier SZX Nifty or Singapore Nifty, as popularly known as. Uh, and everybody who is in, in investing into the stock market 
who know Singapore Nifty because in the morning you will normally see that Nifty and then decide whether the Indian markets will go up or down. And now that uh, trading of that product is happening in GIFT, which is called GIFT Nifty. And there is no GIFT, Singapore Nifty or SX Nifty. It has moved as a GIFT Nifty into the IFFC in GIFT City now. So for the professionals of, of, of your institution, and uh, must uh, have a tremendous opportunity on the fund, on the capital market side. Uh, we have now also enabled direct listing of the Indian unlisted firms. And this again, we need people who understand the valuation, people who understand, uh, you know, how to um, uh, make the, um, you know, new listing happen within the IFFC ecosystem. And thereby they will need professionals from your field in large numbers. And you will now see the listing of those forms happening in the IFFC zone in a big way as the regulations have just been notified uh, uh, as I speak on, on this opportunity. We also have a large number of um, professional service providers. These are like consultancy firm, law firms, um, uh, you know, uh, the fund administrators, they are all present here. And they provide these uh, services to the fund management entities and to the other entities coming up in the IFFC zone. So you have that segment also in a big way present in the IFFC ecosystem. In fact, 72 such professional firms are now present in the IFFC and that number is also growing very rapidly. Uh, you have global capability centers like Bank of America runs a GCC here with almost 2,400 employees in the IFFC zone, which is uh, imparting services to their parent and group entities outside India. So as a professional, I think for you, it's important that IFFC is all foreign currency zone. Like all activities here happening is in foreign currency. There's no Indian rupee here. You can't transact in Indian rupee. In fact, all my transactions of the regulated entity is in foreign currency. So I clearly see and, and probably credit to um, FP, um, FPSP institution that you saw this opportunity so early, you had an MOU now, and you are now coming up with your programs uh, for Gift City and making it you know, known to all the community members of, of understanding this opportunity. So credit to all of you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Dr. Depesh. That is so encouraging, uh, the numbers that you have just mentioned and the kind of opportunities in the field of financial services. 700 plus forms, 150 plus AIFs, and the kind of opportunities that we are living just in a span of one year, 500 plus jobs, uh, only if we consider POs and COs uh, that we have. And I, I believe this is the high time we tell our audiences about uh, the MOU that has been signed between FPSB, um, India, and IFSC. I would request you to please throw some light on our vision um, on signing this MOU and how, uh, you know, what is it that we are looking out of this association? Yeah, so the, the MOU is part of the larger um, landscape that we are trying to create a talent pool uh, as a financial regulatory authority. What we want is the availability of talent and all of you are well aware that today New York as a financial center or London as a financial center uh, is known as financial center because of the availability of talent. You can't have a financial center functioning without talent. And that's where we started reaching out to the several key players in this segment and started interacting with them as to how do we create a larger talent pool within this ecosystem. Uh, and will you be friends, um, uh, this is an early, um, early days, but we are clearly seeing that the talent now keeping note of what is happening in the IFFC zone from their professional uh, uh, skill set perspective. Uh, I just came uh, from the um, from the program which was done by the University of Wollongong, which is the first Australian university imparting now actually a degree uh, on the Gift City campus. And they were today called us to talk about the uh, past, present and future of the Gift City to the community at large, similar to what you guys are doing today. So you can see a large number of, you know, uh, firms coming in. And that's where we thought that this type of an cooperation on an MOU with the right institutions can lay a longer term foundation to create the uh, skill gap, you know, create the um, uh, uh, availability of skill uh, 
uh, as there are a lot of skill gaps in, in, this, uh, in this particular field. What we have done is through this program, uh, we will have on or we will have an ongoing support from FPSB to conduct several webinars, seminars, conferences, which will impart training to this uh, skill manpower, to build the skill manpower uh, for the financial center. We will also create and this will also create and help an ecosystem for the professionals to understand the nuances of gift, understand what roles they can play and then probably become the future, uh, you know, the skill which is available in the financial center. Uh, for example, we just signed up recently with the uh, with uh, Wipro uh, uh, to create a tax fin company here uh, with more than 500 people that they are bringing in. And likewise, many such firms are going to enter the gift city for creating thousands of jobs. And that's where I we believe that this MOU will play a great role of you know collaborating on certification programs on uh, imparting this type of webinars and conferences maybe bringing the professionals here in gift city and making them meet with the companies here and so that they both can talk to each other and understand as to what skills is available with the fpsp professionals what skills the institutions are looking at and how do we bridge those gaps so this mou is going to be uh, a very important for continuous engagement uh, with the FPSP professionals. Thank you so much. That is so encouraging. Uh, I'm sure our CFP professionals who are listening to you today and this video would also be available on the website for those who could not attend. But this is really encouraging in terms of for them to know uh, how this association between both the organizations um, is working together in terms of ensuring that the gift IFSE gets the right talent for the right job done and uh, the kind of opportunity uh, at the same time it brings for our CFP professionals. So with that, we move on to our next question, which talks about the scope of entrepreneurship. As you're aware that our CFP professionals, while working, they also, uh, many of them are also practicing in India and things and so on. So I would I would also want to uh, understand and request you to please, um, you know, share some light on considering the scope of uh, entrepreneurship and practicing opportunities within the GIFT and IFSC. What advice would you give to those looking to start their own ventures to build their practices in this space? Yeah, again, I think very important question because, uh, see, Gujarat is a land of entrepreneurs. If you could really see, one of the reasons why in the early days when I was interacting with, uh, you know, several firms, that uh, um, why IT talent you feel is not available uh, in Gujarat. And believe me, um, a CEO of a mid-sized company told me that the, the talent is available. That's a myth that talent is not available. But the talent is so entrepreneur that they will actually come start working for an IT company for two, three, five years. And after that, they will start their own IT firm uh, in few years. Uh, and, and that's where they, they found that the talent is so entrepreneur that they will work and then they will start their own similar type of, you know, the businesses that they, that they could visualize as to how to go about developing these new, new skills and businesses. So for your professionals, I think I clearly see an opportunity of creating, say, uh, investment advisory firm or portfolio management services firm or creating, say, even the alternate investment fund uh, or creating a fund management entity, FME, uh, which is, um, you know, um, uh, I don't know, is this message for us or? Okay. I hope I'm audible, uh, Tina. Uh, yes, sir, you are audible. It's just that in between your voice fluctuates a little, uh, but mm -hmm. right now you're audible loud and clear. Okay. So uh, what I was trying to explain is on the different opportunities that your uh, professionals would have. One is the uh, fund management entity they can create. They can create an AI alternate investment fund. They can create investment advisory practice here. They can even create a portfolio management services activity here. Uh, they can even, uh, uh, you know, create a broking firm or investment uh, advisory or investment firm. Um, and they can also, uh, you know, deal into some niche areas or new areas like the fintech. 
for yeah. example. So they can create a wealth uh, platforms. They, yes. they can uh, even create, um, you know, the uh, investment avenues for aircrafts, ship leasing, uh, bullion uh, products are available here. So there are uh, so many areas in which, you know, the professionals can actually figure out the niche areas based on their uh, skill sets or their desire to venture into new areas. So many areas in which you can get into. Like insurance broking, stock broking, um, uh, you know, helping uh, like the merchant banking activities uh, because so many of listing will happen here. Uh, even uh, helping the NRIs to invest into India. And I will strongly suggest that FPSP professionals would uh, consider uh, developing a practice for NRIs because IFFC is going to be used by NRIs in a big way. How can you help the NRIs to invest into India through Gift City? Or how can you help the NRIs to buy insurance products or buy banking facilities products from the IFFC zone? So that's a huge uh, amount of opportunities sitting within the Gift ecosystem. Uh, once you start stepping in and start understanding the landscape, I'm sure the professionals will figure out uh, so many new avenues to practice into uh, and develop very niche new practices which they would have otherwise had to go actually overseas uh, to develop those practices and they will be now able to develop those practices in India at Gift City itself. Uh, Tina, I think you are on mute. Pardon me, I'm sorry. I was unable to unmute myself, but thank you so much for giving a detailed information on which all forms that can be established in the gift. And this is really encouraging. The conversation is getting more and more interesting. Uh, we really do have a very short, uh, we really do have you for a very short period of time. We have a lot of questions pouring in, but um, we will try to consolidate the questions. I have um, one more question to ask you, and then probably we will take uh, uh, questions from the audience. Uh, in the terms of ease of doing business, GIFT IFSC has been a, a game changer, we all know. Um, um, I, I just want to understand for the wider audience that how many new firms are you know expected to set up operations there in the coming years, and also more importantly, what you know impact do you foresee on the overall financial ecosystem this will bring? See, uh, the ease, ease of uh, doing business uh, is like an ongoing journey. You can't uh, you know expect an end to ease of doing business because. More and more players comes in, more and more demand comes in, more and more issues comes up, and then and you keep resolving them. So what we've done is now in the initial days we found we figured out that people are finding challenges of making applications. So they have to they they've come in the IFFC zone, they've taken one license, now they have to because we're a unified regulator, they want to do additional businesses for which there are separate regulations and thereby they have to apply, you know, in a separate application one more time. What we now done is we have created a single window IT platform where you can actually log in sitting anywhere and make an application to IFFCA, which is like a single window coming in. The, the application will move to the SEZ, move to the IFFCA. Um, all the required you know information can be provided as one go. All this will help a lot of people to come within the IFFC zone because. That, I think, is the most critical part for a financial center, that the ease of entry and exit has to be very, very easy. Uh, and that it builds into a reputation, which in turn becomes more credible and in turn becomes more business uh, friendly uh, in the journey. And that's what we are trying to build. I'm not saying we are very close to what we would want to. We have to walk a lot of uh, journey uh, still to make that experience seamless. Because today, as I see, uh, the biggest challenge for the institution is, where do I get that information? How do I set up? Whom should I appoint my consultant? You know, Are there any nuances which I should be aware of? Now, it's not that easy because most of our uh, institutions are going to be foreign institutions coming here. Uh, they may not be the Indian institutions. So for them to navigate everything through an online module uh, is, is not that easy. And they depend on many professional service providers. Now, 
uh, that was one of the reasons why we started onboarding the professional service providers with us. Because in India, uh, you know, you know, every every four roads, uh, every corner, you have an advisor sitting, and uh, you have to be you have to be hundred percent sure that you are meeting the right professional for advice and right certified professional for advice, and that's why we created this uh, professional service provider uh, regime where you can easily onboard yourself here. So FPSB members can actually take an authorization from IFFC and start their own practice here and then advise people which will be more authenticated advice of helping the clients to come and set up within the IFFC zone. But as I said, this is going to be a journey. I know we can't, I can't tell you that uh, we are on 10 out of 10, we are there. We can still be 5, 6 on the ranking of 1 to 10, but we want to actually go and make that experience 10 on 10 as we move forward. That is really encouraging. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Shah. And there are so many questions that are pouring in. Um, but one last question, and then we'll move forward. Uh, so you have been instrumental in building the relationship between Gift IFSC and the broader financial community. What are your thoughts on the evolution of this whole relationship and the potential of uh, future collaborations and uh, future financial um, uh, services and industry? Um, I just saw in the questions that are, um, you know, a lot of questions around the voice not being clear. Is it is it so? Is still the voice is not clear? I can hear you clearly. Can we have more messages on the chat, please? If you all can hear uh, Dr. Dipesh properly. You may type in the chat box, please. Everyone, can we all hear him loud and clear? Tina, the chat box. Uh, chat box has been disabled, uh, so they can drop it in the Q and A one only. Right, it's so, clear okay. now. I see. I saw a message that it's clear now. It's clear. All right, all right. So okay. we may proceed. Okay. Sorry, Regina, I missed your last point. What? What? What was your last question? No problem. Let me repeat it one more time for you. So I was saying you have been in instrumental in building the. Um, a relationship building gift IFSC and the broader financial community. We would want to know for your thoughts on the evolution of this whole relationship and ecosystem and the potential of future collaborations and so on. Um, see, what as a regulator, what we do is we do uh, collaborate with several other counterparts. Like we have, you know, MOU signed with Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Singapore. We have signed with Sweden, Luxembourg, uh, Mauritius. Uh, and several other financial centers. So what we are trying to build is uh, the financial center cannot work in isolation. It has to collaborate to grow, and that's what we are doing. You know, we are, we are sending we are, we, are, we are signing up several collaborations with the our counterparts uh, across, and then we are also onboarding several institutions uh, through the MOUs, where we feel that they will add value in creating talent. Uh, someone in creating, you know, the different niche areas, some policy matters. So all those collaborations help us to gain further insight, help expand the ecosystem. Uh, and we are sure with the uh, type of the response that we are getting uh, from the from the market participants, like in each banking, for example, in banking, we have top notch banks all present from across the globe. In fund industry, we have players like Morgan Stanley. Uh, um, you know, Invesco, uh, and now players like SDFC, uh, and, and several big players, you know, setting up their fund uh, regimes here. So we are clearly seeing more and more uh, large institutions entering in the IFFC and creating for themselves a larger business opportunity, which in turn it will provide a lot of opportunities to your members. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, we uh, quickly wind up. Um, would you have any final thoughts, or would you? Uh, would you? What? What would be your? Uh, you know, your message you would like to share with the aspiring professionals who are now listening and now are aware of what is Gift IFSC, what is happening there, and how much potential it has got. Uh, for so, so they definitely are looking to build their careers in the financial services, especially in the framework of the Gift IFSC. What would your message be to uh, sum up? 
I think my message would be start heading towards Gift City as soon as possible. Uh, that that uh, that is a clear message that you can within India you can create a new line of business, new line of employment opportunities, and you should all now figure out that what is those areas that you can start practicing to, and also develop a new niche avenues for yourself uh, through the Gift City and uh, become a global uh, financial professional in real sense. Fair enough. Thank you so much. Uh, um, I am in conversation with um, Dr. Depesha, the Executive Director of IFSCA Gift City, ladies and gentlemen. Please um, uh, quickly put in your questions to the QNS uh, box. And in the meantime, we have a few questions. I'll quickly take one or two. Dr. Depesha, I know you have a hard stop in the next 10 minutes and we will make sure we'll wind it up by then. Um, so one question is that how can an investment advisor um, that and what is the capital required for setting up an office in gift city is it possible to start on lease yes so yes. the uh, the the offices are available on on uh, rental here uh, there are several developers there are the master developer is gift company and even there are business centers so like smaller offices you know four seater ten seater all those types of uh, you know lease rental premises are available Right. Um, and like uh, Dr. Dipesh has rightly mentioned, the process is very easy. It's available online. Uh, Sania, I would request you to please uh, uh, mention in the chat box the, the uh, website uh, so that all our, uh, you know, safety professionals can reach out to um, them. And from there, they can have relevant questions that they have answered. Um, one last question quickly, and then we will wind it up. What are the potential challenges and opportunities for financial planners, certified financial planners uh, looking to set up operations and gift IFSC? I, I think we did discuss that in detail yes. about uh, uh, the potential opportunities. I think from a challenge perspective, right. I would say uh, the challenge would be uh, uh, not um, you know going in detail about the opportunity then you will not be able to effectively cater to the business requirements or you may not be able to effectively take the employment opportunities. So the challenge is, as a professional, the time comes in everybody's career that, look, um, I had already done FPSB, you know, I don't want to now learn new things. All those, you know, normal issues which a professional face of not getting into a new line of business and not getting in detail of the new line of business opportunity, then it's very challenging. But once you start getting in, believe me, friends, you will find this very, very fascinating as a career to build for and from an IFFC, FPSP professional into an IFFC because you will completely change your way of uh, taking the new business opportunities for completely from a domestic to international. And also then to the non-residents across the globe uh, from one office uh, within the Indian ecosystem, which is an offshore center for you. So I think the, there are tremendous opportunities. Challenges are only by not going in detail. Once you get in detail, I think you will convert the challenges into great opportunities for yourself. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, uh, with that, uh... Dear audience, we have come towards the end of the session. This has been so far one of the best sessions that I have moderated. Thank you so much, Dr. Dipesh, for um, giving ample information on GIFT IFSC and IFSCA and uh, its contribution to um, Indian economy as well as the world's economy and changing the entire landscape of financial services and so on. Uh, with that, I would request all our CFP professionals to please ensure keeping a close eye and grabbing this opportunity at GIFT IFSC. And please also sensitize our wider CFP community, those who could not attend the session today to get benefit of this. Um, this video will be recorded and will be um, available on our website for your future references as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Dipesh. It has been a pleasure talking with you. It has always been a pleasure connecting with you and understanding, learning new things from you. Uh, you with that, I, I understand that you are also going to be in gifts very soon. I think 4th, 3rd or 4th October, you are having a bigger event, right? Yes. That is right, yes. Dr. Dipesh. And I was about to ask Sanya, along with the vote of thanks, to talk about our event that we are having in the gift 
on the third and fourth uh, to ensure that most or of our CFP professionals are available there uh, to witness what we just spoke about in past one hour uh, is actually happening uh, there. So uh, with that, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, uh, Sanya, uh, over to you. Thank you, Tina, and thank you, Debeer, sir. Uh, as we draw this insightful session to a close, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our esteemed speakers for their invaluable contributions today. And firstly, my sincere gratitude to Dr. Debeer, your deep dive into the transformative potential of uh, GIFT IFSC has provided the financial planning community with a comprehensive understanding of the vast opportunities that lie ahead for them. And a big thank you to Tina Rawal for guiding us through the webinar and helping us understand the, the strategic advantages that GIFT IFSC has to offer. And to our audience, thank you for tuning in and for your active participation in today's webinar. Your engagement is what makes these sessions meaningful and successful. So uh, as we were talking about the event that we are doing in Gandhinagar, Gift City. So before we conclude, uh, I'm excited to share that the Indian Finan India Financial Planning Conclave 2024, in collaboration with IFSCA, is scheduled to be held on October 4th, 2024 at the Gift City Club in Gandhinagar. So this event is a part of our celebrations also for the World Financial Planning Week and the World, in World Investor Investors Week that is promoted by IOSCO. And during this event, we will also have the new CFP certificate ceremony where we, where we will celebrate the success of those candidates who earn their certification for the first time uh, between January and August 2024. And in addition, we are thrilled to share that FPSB India has launched its first ever awards to recognize outstanding individuals who have been sick, who has made significant contributions to our industry. And the winners will be invited to receive their awards from our esteemed jury members at the conclave. So the email, com the email communications and the registration links have been sent to you already. So if you have any questions on the event, please feel free to reach us at events at fpsb.in. And we have also shared the registration link in the chat. So you can do that from there too. And for today's webinar, kindly note uh, that all the CFP professionals will have the opportunity to earn one CPD credit once the session has been uploaded to your LMS portal within the next few weeks. And also this webinar will be available on our official YouTube channel on Monday. So please do check it out. And finally, stay tuned to our social media channels for more updates. Your continued participation is what drives us to create valuable and uh, valuable and such su su successful content for you. So thank you so much for joining us today and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, thank Sanya. You. Thank you, Dr. Dipesh. Good evening, thank everyone. Thank you. thank you so much.